Hello, hello, lovely people. Welcome back to my channel. Now that RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 8 is over, it's time to talk about how this was one of the most overproduced seasons of every All-Stars to date. And that's not to say that other All-Stars have not been overproduced, but this was the most egregious one. So I have finally put together how I would have fairly judged this season had it been a more even competition. Starting with episode one, let's talk about the fame games. I could not keep my eyes off Mrs. Kasha Davis the entire episode, from the runways down to the performance, down to the final runway of the episode. She was magnetizing. I did not love Monica's performance as she looked a little disconnected, but her looks were so strong that I would keep her safe. Darian would still be in the bottom for her performance and outfits overall, and I think that Lala's looks were weak enough to put her in the bottom. Because of the rapport that Lala has with many of the rest of the group, I do believe that Darian would likely be out. Next, moving into episode two, we have RuPaul's Drag Race Live. I personally found Jessica to be the funniest one in the group, so she is going to win this week. Candy didn't deliver much in the challenge, and Alexis's breastplate was very distracting on top of the performance being pretty weak, so the two of them are in the bottom this week. Based off of how the group's perception was of Alexis, I do believe that she would have been voted out. Next, moving into episode three, which was the supermarket ball. Heidi was objectively the strongest in all three categories and absolutely should have been in the top this week. There was no excuse for the strange edit of making it seem like it was going to be her win week and then making her safe. While Jessica was great, I felt that she was only strong in two of the categories, so she's still high, but Heidi is the winner this week. I also felt that James wasn't terribly strong in any of the categories, and since Naisha's still here, I don't think she would be able to sew very well, and I do believe that she would be in the bottom. Again, based off of the way that the group was feeling about James to this point, as many of the cast have said that they were not featuring her attitude or any of the outfits that she was bringing, I do believe that they would have sent her home. Next, we move to episode four, Scream Queens. Lala and Heidi, in my opinion, and in many others, were the strongest of the week. So Heidi is going to win this challenge yet again. I cannot imagine that Monica or Naisha would excel very well. And since she was in the bottom the week before, Naisha will be out this week. Next, we move into episode five, which is the Snatch Game. Now, I know that Kasha Davis would absolutely obliterate this challenge. So I'm going to give her the win this week. I thought that Jimbo's performance was strong. However, I did feel that the jokes were in bad taste with light of everything going on in the queer community, specifically about trans people and drag queens being groomers. I didn't think it was a great message to send out to the world. Heidi was very weak in the challenge and probably would have been in the bottom had she not sent herself home. And I do believe that Kahana would have also been in the bottom that same week with Jessica probably being safe. And I think with wins under her belt and without Alexis to kind of push her over the edge and betray her in the whole Candy and Jimbo scenario, I don't think that Heidi would have axed herself from the competition. And I think that this would have been the week that Kahana got eliminated. Next, we move to episode six, which is Joan, the unauthorized Rusical. Lala was so strong in the challenge and in the runway, so she is going to win this week. Because of the looks and the performances, and I do believe that Jimbo was very weak in the challenge, and they simply tried to hide how bad she did, Jimbo will be in the bottom, and I do believe that Monica would have also struggled in this challenge, and I think this would be the week that Monica would go home. Next, we move to episode seven, which is Forensic Queens. Jessica's performance was undoubtedly the best of the week, as she is the one who is quoted most from this challenge. Candy was basically playing herself and wasn't terribly funny. Even Rue said that she wasn't playing the character, but was playing Candy. That was enough to put her in the bottom. I also do not think that Heidi would have done well, as she likely would have gotten the role that Alexis had, which wasn't terribly funny. I don't think Heidi would excel well in improv, considering that she didn't do great in Snatch Game. However, I think that Candy would be out. Since Heidi does have two wins already, 
And I think that the queens would think of her as competition. And I believe that the other queens would think of Candy as too big of competition to keep her. Next, moving to episode eight, you're a winner, baby. Jimbo was so strong this week, and I still don't understand why she wasn't the winner of this week's challenge. The only thing that wasn't really that great were the pearls, but she had the most point of view of all the queens that were remaining, and she did the most interesting thing with the fabric. Consistent with other seasons of All Stars, this is the week where if you are not in the top, you are in the bottom. So that means everyone is up for elimination, and I do believe that Kasha would be out this week as she can't really sew and would probably talk a lot about how she just doesn't do it. Next is episode 9, The Carson Cressley Roast. Jessica made me laugh more than anyone, and I think a lot of people have agreed that Jessica was very funny. While Jimbo was very strong, because she had done this character on another series, it wasn't enough of a growth point from last time. And I also am just not a huge fan of when people do character studies for a roast, I didn't like it when Nina did it. I didn't like when Trinity did it. I didn't really like when Coco did it. So this is kind of in line with some other feelings that I've had about past roasts. So Jessica is the winner this week because her jokes were thoughtful and entertaining and she really leaned into her strengths. And again, everyone is up for elimination. I think this time Lala would be out. Then we move into episode 10, the letter L. I think Heidi would kill this challenge. I think she was probably set up to do well this challenge, but didn't make it. And I do think that Jimbo and Jessica would suffer the exact same problem that they had in the original episode. And since there was tension since the Snatch Game, I think that Heidi would probably eliminate Jimbo. Now, if I'm being completely honest, the roast of Carson Cressley would have never happened and we would have moved straight to a top four. I personally don't think that we should have had these last two challenges and they should have cut from the final two if they wanted more queens for the fame games. That's not how it went, so we will continue to judge the season as it appeared. Now going into the finale, both Jessica and Heidi have three wins each. And now for the fame games, I think that the multiplier shouldn't have happened as it was really unfair to the rest of the queens. It was sort of like, we want to control who gets the secondary win, so much that we are not going to give actual control to the audience to do so. I think it could have gone to Darian, who had some really great looks. I think it could have gone to Lala, who was really congenial. I think it could have gone to Monica for having such an iconic final performance. It could have gone to so many different queens, and while I'm not upset that it went to Lala, it did feel slightly slanted towards her from production. I would have personally removed that element too, and just given whoever won that final challenge a cash prize. And now for the finale between Jessica and Heidi, I think it really could have gone either way. I think it would have been a really strong ending, but again, I would have never let it go to this point. I think it should have been a top four, the final challenge, whoever performed well gets to move on and lip sync for the crown, and the other two that did not do well get chopped and added to the fame game roster. And I think that would have been a more fair critique overall, rather than really slimming it down and making it so clear who production wanted to win. And when I talk about overproduced seasons, as I have many times, my biggest point of contention is always that it feels like production knows who they want from the beginning and makes the narrative surround that. There are times where someone does really well in a challenge, but they're not rewarded because the dossier doesn't say Heidi and Closet wins the ball. The dossier says this person wins the ball. The dossier says this is who's going home. Make the narrative stick. And the judges work around that. That's the way that it feels. Whether it's happening or not, that's how it comes across. Many other reality shows have come out and shared that that's how they did judging, is that they knew who was going to go home that week from what production and the team said, and they had to make it work. So there it is. Between Jessica and Heidi, who would you be voting for to win? I think it's pretty clear that Jessica showed the most growth throughout the entire season and was there to have a really good time. I think that Heidi showed phenomenal growth from her original season, and showed some really amazing and incredible looks. And I think she gave us some great TV moments. Both of them were so strong and either one of them could have come out on top, but it would have made for a really interesting finale if this is how it had gone. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. 
Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to click that like button. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe. Goodbye.